Now, you mentioned Jamal. Mm -hmm. Describe Jamal. What does his hair look like? What does he look like? Jamal is looks like an African American boy. He's uh, not though. He's uh, you know part half Jamaican, and his uh, father's African American, and he has thick, coarse, curly hair. He keeps it cut short. Do you think that? Did you get a sense that there was any negativity focused inward? Do you think that he may have? internalize some of those feelings about nappy bad hair or was it solely a reference of beauty for women? Oh, no, I definitely think he uh, internalizes that and again nothing explicit uh, would uh, let me know that he didn't say I hate my hair uh, but uh, you can tell uh, just by what people like what people are around in terms of how they see themselves as well. So it wouldn't surprise me to know that he had some negative self images of himself uh, in looking on how he assessed women's hair. I think I have a funny story, well, very sad story actually, uh, about supermodels. You mentioned models and the standard of beauty. There was a young man, I was in college, and the professor put up a picture of Alex Weck, a supermodel, very, very dark and her head is completely shaved. And he asked the, the young black man in the room, what did they think of her? Is she beautiful? She's a model. And they, you know, they all, there was a consensus that she was not attractive. And one, one young man said that, you know, she's absolutely not because she's super dark, you know, very thin, but at the top of the list was that she's bald headed, you know, and very dark. Those two things were like at the top of the list. But the sad part about it was he looked over at his friend who was like a mirror image of Alex Wack, and she just had this look of disgust and, you know, just she was very sad, and you could tell. And he began to cry. He really cried, boo hoo tears, because he didn't realize that that's what he was doing. He was taking in these images and, you know, he was pretty adamant about why she was so ugly, but didn't realize that he was insulting his, his own friend. Yeah. And so I think that that's the history of why, you know, everything that you described is the history of why um, these preferences exist. But the reason that they persist, I feel, is that it's, it's deeper. It's ingrained in us and we carry it on. Um, because it's reinforced by society. And so, you know, the question I often ask to black men um, is, you know, what is beautiful to you? Because I honestly feel that it's directly related to what young black women feel is beautiful. And I guess my question to you is, um, how do you feel about that relationship? You already talked about Jamal and how you, how you combat that, but, you know, why it still persists in and how we can, other strategies about how we can attack it, I guess. Well, in terms of attacking it, it's all about information and education is power and education is the power to change these long standard and uh, uh, commonly held views. And so things like this getting published and getting out there so people can see them. Um, so I think that is uh, fixed to it, but it's the definitely slow and a long time in coming. And my own personal experience is when I was in college and I was dating, uh, for me it was light skin and long straight hair is what I thought was the standard of beauty. And just so happens, and it's not by accident, that the woman I married was light skin light eyes and long straight hair and so I certainly um, my auntie okay <laughs> keep going <laughs> I certainly have fallen uh, directly into this uh, how I describe Jamal I was Jamal at 14 all the way of course through being an adult and so this has only been in the last 10 years or so that I've come into this my own realization of being able to look that women specifically, but people in general, and uh, recognize that beauty comes in all shapes and all sizes and all hairstyles, for example. Uh, so it's it's a matter of time, and for me, that's what it was. It was education, it was reading, it was seeing, and um, kind of understanding how the media works and understanding, you know, that the things we see, somebody has made a decision about the placement on the page, for example, 
in uh, print ads, uh, you see in newspaper ads for a movie, uh, the there's a degree of importance and the person whose photo is on the right is the person who's the most important and then it goes from right to left and top to bottom. And so if you notice even in some of the ads or things, if there is a black person and if they're on the bottom right or in the background. Mm. And um, those things are choices that people are making and the people who are making the choices are people who are making choices never being told necessarily, uh, you know, white is right. Uh, but their mindset has been that and it's just root behavior that uh, this thing exists and it's not until and unless we inform them until they have an experience uh, it's usually the experience of protest or someone standing up from the outside pushing that makes it uh, that brings about the change okay so I mentioned earlier that you are a successful businessman and you, you just told us that when you were younger up until you know your early adulthood, your concept of beauty was what you had been told. It was light, it's bright, um, and longer hair. And as a result, you were lucky enough to, you know, snag my aunt. Well, she came to your attention, but she's a wonderful person and you guys married. Um, what would you say to the young black woman who doesn't have straight hair and she's dealing with men who haven't reached your level of consciousness yet? They're still buying into what they've been told. Um, and that woman says to you, I just want to be loved. I want the future successful businessman. You know, politics aside, I want to be beautiful. You know, and I want some a black man to acknowledge my beauty. Um, but you still, I'm assuming, you still want to relate to her to affirm her own beauty and her own, you know, hair and accept herself. How, what do you say to that young woman? Well, I mean, it's a very challenging, of course, because you can say one thing in terms of, you know, be yourself. But if the woman's goal is to achieve this relationship, and particularly with someone um, who she knows has the view that society has, um, that, that type of advice is uh, really unrealistic. So I, I think it really is a matter of each woman serving as that point of education and um, bringing it up when they can in terms of helping each person that they interact with. So you're in a relationship with somebody and early on, of course, you don't get into discussions about hair politics, but right. perhaps on the third or fourth date, you uh, bring up to a potential suitor, uh, someone that you think is interesting and you want to spend more time with, you know, what do you think about these different things? And you start to direct their knowledge and you form and shape them. And women have been doing this for years in terms of, um, taking men who are uh, unfinished, if you will, and forming them into the man that they want and the man that they desire. Uh, so I would uh, advise a woman in that position to have that mindset that yes, this person perhaps isn't informed, this person perhaps doesn't have uh, the knowledge to know and appreciate you for who you really are, and maybe you do initially have to have the facade, as we all do, we're all not our blemished selves initially when we meet someone we put our best foot forward so perhaps that best foot might include a weave it might include <laughs> that uh, the relaxed hair and you uh, allow that you get to know the person and then you become the educator just like African Americans are for long times uh, become the reason that some European Americans understand racism from a one-on-one -on -one interaction being able to ask questions or in some cases put their foot in their mouths and have an African American friend or colleague say to them hey look what you said there was inappropriate or that joke was out of line and so we have to be uh, the seekers of the change that we want. Fine.